Hello my dears, my name is Mariana and welcome to my channel where we explore mysticism, magic, and meaning. Um, today we're going to answer the question, are you really a witch? We're going to break down what a modern witch is and what makes you one. The props. I promise I know I'm too old for this. No, but really, if you are interested in spirituality, in witchcraft, in magic, you've probably stumbled along one of these videos or posts before. Common indicators that you're a witch often seem to include being an empath, intuitive, introverted, in love with nature, or just being spiritually curious in general. And although all these qualities do seem somewhat witchy, they're also pretty vague. If that's all it takes to be a witch, then job done. Obviously, there's something missing in these lists. And to discover what that is, we have to ask, what really is a witch? Are you born a witch or do you become one? Are you initiated into being a witch? Do you have to have ancestors that were witches? Do you have to practice a form of witchcraft? Do you need to own a cauldron or crystals or a mildly malicious black cat? The only tool we have to answer any of these questions is to look into the history of being a witch. And truly, witches don't exist without their long and pretty horrifying history. In the last century, and really in the last few decades, witch has become a term of empowerment. But before that, witch was a death sentence and a term specifically used to suppress female power. So let's, let's go back. Back to the Garden of Eden and discuss the first witch. In the medieval text, the alphabet of Ben Sirah, it's not Eve who's identified as the first wife of Adam, but Lilith, who was not made from his rib, but actually from the same earth. But there was no bliss for the couple um, when it came time for them to, you know, Lilith responded, and I quote, I will not lie below. And he said, I will not lie beneath you, but only on top, for you are fit only to be in the bottom position while I am to be the superior one. Lilith responded, we are equal to each other inasmuch as we are both created from the earth. And so obviously Adam is pretty unhappy with this and he complains to God and says, you gotta get this lady to shape up or get out of town. And God tells Lilith, you gotta listen to your husband or else you're gonna get exiled from Eden and you're gonna have to become a child devouring demoness for the rest of your life, which will be eternity. And Lilith responds, do what you will. And Lilith flies out of Eden, screeching the unknowable, ineffable name of God that somehow only she knew. This story is the perfect example of the paradox of being a woman in patriarchy. You are both essential and valueless and carry a magic that is incomprehensible and undefinable. In fact, a lot of scholars believe that in the Neolithic period, which was a long time ago. People didn't really understand how conception happened and they believed not only did men have nothing to do with it, but women actually just decided to have children when they wanted to. Imagine how much power women had in this culture where they were able to do the one thing God alone could do to create life. Imagine the threat women posed having all of this power that men literally didn't understand. The only way to contain that threat was to otherize women, to persecute them, so that that immense earthen power became meaningless and even diabolical. Throughout the entirety of the Middle Ages and the Renaissance, witches were rounded up and executed for pretty much just being women who seemed powerful. Women who had the audacity to dabble in the occult or magic or just perform their own sense of magnitude. So it makes sense that we want to reclaim the word witch. We want to erase its centuries of persecution and oppression. We want to make it a term of empowerment, but we must do so with reverence and integrity and intentionality. Being a witch is not something that happens one day. 
you don't just wake up like the sisters in Charmed or Sabrina and flick a finger and magic happens around you. Those stories are metaphors for what being a witch really is. Whether you're a woman or a man or non-binary or trans, it doesn't matter. Being a witch is awakening to your inner power that literally comes from your humanness, that comes from being a creature of the earth. It's a metaphor for awakening to the great divine feminine power that exists in all of us and has been repressed for countless millennia. So I believe the reason that we see ourselves so easily in these listicles is because we recognize that we don't fit into the patriarchal mold. We're empathetic because we're in touch with the divine feminine. We're introverted because we don't want to perform this extroverted show that the world expects of us. We love nature and animals because we're animals and we're nature, and so we crave that. We crave the return to it. I think if we identify as a witch, we need to be aware of what we're saying. Are we saying it because we really love the idea of playing with magic? Or is it just a way of describing our social discomfort with patriarchal norms? Is it a way of describing our difference? The fact that we're more in tune with ourselves and the world around us. We're willing to believe in something more than science and reason. The feminine in us, the divine in us, the souls inside of us are waking up and looking for a world that doesn't quite exist. On a personal note, I actually resisted calling myself a witch for a really long time. I did the lists and the quizzes and it said, yeah, you're a witch, but I just didn't feel right about taking the term. It felt too laden in oppression and I didn't really know how to practice witchcraft. I didn't really know how to engage with that in an authentic way. It took me a long time to realize that my craft was my participation with the divine in the world. It was my sense of spirit. It was how I found my depth. It was how my soul got to interact with the world soul. And yeah, now I'm out of the broom closet because I, I'm not afraid to say that I reject the patriarchal spiritual paradigm. I choose to follow the rhythms of nature, my innate femininity. I choose to engage in practice and magic and ritual. And honestly, I think that's what it means to be a witch. You're a witch if you decide you are. And I know that's kind of anticlimactic. Most of you are probably hoping for a checklist, but I don't think that that's the way the world works if you're being really authentic. I think if you're curious, if you're a witch, it means that you're searching for more spiritual connectedness to the earth. I think it means that you want to explore other avenues of divine expression, that you're willing to be guided by the moon and worship the sun and literally be a living being on this beautiful, beautiful earth that we have. I don't think you need to be an empath to be a witch. I don't think that you need to love animals. I don't think that you need to want to go camping. I think being a witch is being a person of power. I think that you need to be willing to heal the wounded feminine in us all. And I think it's somebody who chooses magic. And magic is a whole other story that we'll probably get into another time. But the way I see it, magic is expression. It's participation with the earth. And that's all you need. Being a witch means you're willing to start a journey, and becoming a witch is a journey. There are so many things to explore and so many things to learn, and it is such a beautiful path to go down. So I hope you go down it if that feels right for you, and um, I'm right there with you, right beside you, figuring it all out. If you're interested on in learning more about starting your witchcraft journey or your spirituality journey, Definitely follow me on Instagram. I do daily reflections and card pulls and all sorts of really cool things that'll just help you get started. So maybe this wasn't the list you were hoping for. Maybe I got a little bit too history for you. History is fun. And it's important. I think that too often in the world we live in, everything is clickable and we get baited into believing that we're consumable, that that we are just made up of digestible parts and that we're not complex wholes, but we are. And we need to be intentional about the words we choose for ourselves and understanding the truths that are arising from our depths. So hey, 
I'm happy you're here, witches. I'm happy to have given you something for your journey, for something to contemplate. Whether you agree with it or not, that is totally cool. And I hope that if you are a witch, that it's a beautiful, magical journey you're embarking on. So hey, if you thought that this was a cool chat and you enjoyed it, please give me a like or a subscribe would be really helpful as I'm beginning to grow my channel. And if you really, really liked my video, make sure to check out my Patreon and consider supporting me as a creator. Next video I'm really excited about, I'm gonna do a dive into how to prepare for a tarot reading because there's more to it than you think. Preparation, it's key. So make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss that when it comes out. So. Give me a comment if there's any other topics you want me to discuss and hope you have a beautiful, meaningful day, my loves. Thanks.